now look at how to identify an action. Assuming the cause of action falls squarely within the jurisdiction of the magistrate court. How do I do that? Now, a magistrate court is a court of sovereign jurisdiction. So there is no fast and hard rules about how you are going to find your action. The only thing the law requires is to do what? You find your claim and your issue with the principle. If you can simply say A versus B, um, on so and so day they have transaction, they receive this year by attached to this weight, and the trial will just show that this person has not been able to liquidate the debt. Wherefore, the plaintiff claims against the defendant for the sum of 600,000 naira. That is all. You end it, put the date, put your name as the counsel that is uh, handling the matter, and then of course, you have to put all the address for service. You know, I said in course of time, we're going to be making use of this. So you put your address for service. Because the person you are suing must be done was to be signed in the process. As at the time you are filing the action, you don't know whether this person is going to call a lawyer or not. So address of service will be what? His own address. That address of the defendant. And we have also learned that if the defend you have more than one defendant, and the cause of action is same, and you all have interest in the matter. After adding their names, in your claim, you can state that you are suing them what? Jointly and separately. Right. So that is it for magistrate courts. Now, I assume it that the cause of action, if you want that it kneels in favor of the high court of the state, that is when you are going to sit down and ask yourself the following questions. One, what is the enabling law with respect to this cause of action? So you must find out the enabling law so that you will be able to satisfy your client who has imposed so much confidence on you. And then again, you also have to have on your temple the high court civil procedure rules. Remember, the high court rules are the rules that tells you the procedure. So the procedure stipulated in the high court rules are the procedure that you are going to do what to follow. Why? Because it is right to know that where a law has stipulated means or mode of instituting action, there cannot be a departure from it. There can be a departure from it. So you must make sure that you are instituting your action in compliance with the rules of the court. Now, this takes us to having a look at some instant provisions of uh, the addresses of Nigeria, High Court. Practice and procedural rules in order to support their own civil practice, civil procedural rules, but they call their own practice and procedure. 2021, I want to ask why. There is not the same thing, but what this law has tried to do is to fuse the normal procedures with existing laws or laws that have over time been decided by the court of its laws. So what we now have done to do was bring the principles and put for the purposes of making it very easy. And if you have chosen to go to a high court and you have no rules, you're going to ask yourself, what is the nature of this suit that I want to institute? Is it going to be contentious? Is it something that requires mere interpretation? Is it recovery of rent or recovery of possession? Or is it recovery of mortgage properties? All those things, no matter the class, they are already provided for in the law. 
So we take them one after the other. Let's say, for instance, this is a wheel. Somebody runs in with the, the father of your client, run away with his wife time, and that she dead, there is need to prove the will and to distribute the tickets as contained in the will. And maybe one of the sons or any of the children is not willing to do that. Maybe he's feeling afterwards I buried my father and they want to take everything or I'm the first son. I mean the first son, what I did is what you take. That you know is impossible. Why? Because we know simply stands for what the wish of the dead man. And every wish of the dead man that is not ambiguous must be done but to be carried out to be laid down. So in that evil situation, and then you also ask yourself, what actually is this is God and bragging? Is it saying that you will was it valid or incompetently made? Or is it saying that by the provision of whatever the father has done, maybe by custom, it should relax to him, he should not be the one. I'm giving you about three different causes of action that can emanate from the will. So we also take it one after the other. Let's assume that what your brother is like, what his brother is like is contentious. Maybe contentious in the sense that he is saying that when our father made this, purportedly made this will, he didn't make it with full sanity. Right? In that case, you can't ask for interpretation. You are going to confront him head not going to go to probate. Which means the cause of action is going to be what? Contentious. And that's why it is what we talk someone. Since it's going to be contentious. So it then means that what this person is saying has made the cause of action contentious. So we are going to sue him. And in suing him, the next thing is who would be the proper parties. Mind you, this will was not at where the problem so the problem register, as a matter of law, becomes what? Improper and nominal party. So, so this man has given us trouble. We add the problem register as a proper party to the action. And then the heading of the action matters the laws. The heading of the action. For instance, let's take over here where I want to bring this to the normal here. The defender is the normal here. Remember, when we talk about jurisdiction. We are the defender resides, we are the cause of action approved, we are the execution of the contract what to be carried out. Now, I'm trying to formulate my dreams. When you look at the forms that are attached to the civil procedural rules, you see that there is a form for writ of summons. Normally it's called what form 01. Right, so I go to my form 01 and then I start to prepare the rest. All I need to know on the head I write form 01 in the High Court of Abbas in Nigeria. In the High Court of Omar, which is like the second line. Because that form 1 is first line. Second line is the High Court of Abbas in Nigeria. Third one, in the Omar, the judicial, the High Court of Abbas in Nigeria. And then the last line will now be holding at Oh my, I write. I write suit number HU dash because I wouldn't know the suit number at that very time. And then towards my neck, I start, I write between, and then I write it. But before writing the parties, I can place this a little bit before writing between, simply saying, in the matter of the of profit, because the profit action. In the matter of contention of the will of Mr. H.O.S. deceased, I've done the survey. So I mean, my Lord looking at you, we now know that these are actually falling under progress. I write between ABC versus XYZ, Brenda, 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 Brenda,
and on the body, the first paragraph two, you normally address it to somebody. Two will now be the names of the defender. If they share different addresses, which is usually possible, after you have written two, A, B, C of number, you put his address. And progress registrar or clear high court of justice or matter. And then all those things that you have to bring order that you are here by commanded that we need the 14 days of the service of this suit of summons on you, that you cause to be served, time and served, your memorandum for appearance, and then so on and so forth. At the end of your bit of summons, you will now state your beliefs. What are the things you are asking? Maybe your first belief is that one, a declaration from the Honorable Court that the will of Mr. SOS, who died on Solosotoli Day, was validly made. That's one. Secondly, maybe your second belief, a declaration of the Honorable Court that the context of the said will has to be interpreted the way they are. Maybe the third one, that all the beneficiaries mentioned in the will of such a person, disease, are entitled to all the various tickets made to them in the will. Do that thing. They tend to write the name of the lawyer, address for service. So that is now you have sued by way of what? Wit of summons. Now you also see a situation where somebody is saying, by cost of the people, uh, this uh, will can not stand. That's why I don't know something happening, no matter. Even if it's happening at Uber, so long as the man has a will. A will does what? What does a will do? It excludes all known native law and custom. So in that case, you don't even need to bother to sue him under root of summons. What will you do? You choose originating someone who is going to be passed out for you. 14 days at least, and then you do a adoption if the cause is all that comes regularly. And within a month or two more, judgment has been given. So we are going to try to draft an originating summons now. So you go to your rules of court and pick the appropriate form number. As you the form is for two. And they have the right for two. You still stay in court. You still stay in the matter of what. What we change now is that this subheading is going to tell, tell us something that this will is not in contention. But what by adding to this to do what they talk with? Because somebody who says I am lying on custom does not do what? Doesn't challenge the will. Do you understand? He's not challenging the will. He simply says, let the will be, but it's custom that should supersede. So in that way, you simply state, in the matter of interpretation of the will of XYZ disease, between you put the names of the parties, and then you also put the same format to you put out the names of those who you have sued. And then the major thing comes. You know, in an originating summons, you have already stated from two originating summons. The major thing in originating summons to do was is to count questions. So if you start by setting relief, you are telling this event that it will fail. It will become incompetent. What the court wants to see first is I was your questions. It's a big it's known that this honorable court is required to interpret the following questions with regard to the will of Mr. XYZ disease. And the questions are these. One, whether by the state of the law, if you have any case in mind, you can easily say whether by the decision of the Supreme Court in Okele and Mushuri. 1972, one Supreme Court 267. Whether a custom or native law or custom supersedes a will. 
you have caused your operation. That operation can do the damage. And then you now say, following from the above, the honorable court is persuaded to grant the following relief if the answer is in the positive or affirmative. Then you put your claims. One, a declaration that this will was this person, a declaration that everybody mentioned in this will is entitled to receive blah blah blah. And then one important thing you also need to know when you're talking about finding a suit by the way of the religious something that there has to be words and not be that accompany it. Because it is that that you're not going to do a statement of claim. It is that the that will tell the court what happened, who your father is. You have to link yourself and his son and one of his sons. The first defendant is also his son, he's the eldest son of our father. We are natives of so 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 place. Right? And then after you say that you said my father in his lifetime wrote and deposited a will at the province registry of the High Court of Justice or murder, a copy of which is here to attach. That's the document the court will be looking at in making the interpretation. And then you also say that you are because you're also going to have a written address. It is the written address that will not bring out your argument. Persuasive enough for my Lord to answer your question in the affirmative. And then there will also be what is verified and believed. In other words, two affidavits are required to accompany and originating someone. So having done that, you are good to go. We can now talk about service. Now again, in a normal read of someone's situation, just like we have mentioned before, let's say for instance a land is in dispute. You have drafted your read of someone because it is contentious. In your statement, you now have to attach your statement of claim. Who will introduce who you are? Introduce who your defendants are. Introduce the subject matter of the cause of action and also give history of what will be in this field. If it is land, the history of what you treasure that is what traditional history, assuming you are claiming by inheritance, right? But if you want it, you are going to rely on what? Your document of purchase. But that does not mean in order to place it. Try to know the record, the traditional history of the man who sold to you. Do you understand? Yes. So that you say that by the time he gave me the document, I converted such, and apart from converting such at the land registry, and the search turned out to show that the property was not encumbered. I went ahead to make inquiries, and I found, as a matter of fact, that the traditional history of this family is that Mr. Avery was the person that he forested the land. He began this, this was it began this, this was then you're not talking about the family tree. Down to the man who sold to him, how he became seized of that very land. When he sold to you, who are who were present? What inquiries he made? And how he executed the document in your favor. And what you did next, you went to the land to register. And you're not aware of any other adverse title. Right. You have stated your, you have read your statement of claim. And now, you have to give evidence now, as well as four witnesses. So you are going to reconstruct. The statement of prayer into what written statement of oath because you are going to give it as, as your own star witness. You are going to give evidence in line with your pleadings. This is because in law, any pleaded fact that is not backed by evidence is deemed to be what abandoned. 
So that's the principle of law that is very, very important. So even someone like you, you go to take what he has If anyone he has said and there's no evidence back in it, you just take it. So that when the aggressive the court, you simply tell the court that this, this, this cannot stand. And if the court strikes out those paragraphs, the case will come for you. Now, having done that, you are also obligated to file alongside with these documents, written statements of both of your witnesses. I think there's something called affidavit against multiplicity of action. You comply with that to file a brief affidavit stating that this action is not pending anywhere. And then you also file another one which is like an ADR affidavit stating the attempt that you have made to ensure that the matter didn't come to court. But that in the end, the other party refused, and that's why you have come to court. And then, you do a list of your witnesses, attached to it, list of witnesses. If you're going to rely on documents, you also do a list of documents. And the documents here, remember your evidence act. Documents can be electronic, electronically generated, or it can be what? Real evidence. Maybe you're going to visit the locals where the court will see the tree that you have mentioned. You must also stipulate in your list of documents the visit to locals. Because in your document, you're not going to say, I'm going to enter the document. But you simply say that you move the court to a local for particular. And it's also important, before ending your list of witnesses, end it with an omnibus one by stating the claimant shall subpoena any witness that is relevant for his case. This has happened to me just a couple of weeks ago in the tribunal. We tried, uh, we did a record, a video record of what transpired at the Colossian Center. These people came to the office, we prepared them only for him to get to court and I started saying, I authorized someone else to record it and I knew it was over. That that wasn't going to go in. You know, but what said us is that I have a provision in my list of documents that said that any other witness that may be subpoenaed. So I subpoenaed somebody and they started crying. I subpoenaed somebody because this was a Christian association that was at that time that presented him also on the ground that took the record, recorded the same video that we wanted to take that. So that's another way of running away for it, from it. And then also, when you're talking about documents, you can also end it by saying, any other document that may be required to be produced by subpoena who says article. That is any document that you may require somebody to produce through subpoena. The other one is subpoena who says article. If you can't do it, if you want the person to come and make statement. So all these bundles of documents are required when you are filing your action in the high court. And the rule of law says that if you do not comply, the registrar shall not accept your process. I don't want to the registrar that has refused anything. They only interested in the money. You know, so you go to court and buy it. So, and then again, as a lawyer who has prepared this way, remember to affix your seal, your professional seal. If your professional seal has not arrived, at that moment, and you have paid for it, you can do what? Attach your receipt to show that you have paid for the ring. So the same process here also applies to federal high courts. It also applies to national industrial courts. So it's a uniform pattern. Then a couple of two things I want to look at, talking about commencement of an action. If at the time you are commencing an action, you know the law requires that the claimant who claims a piece of land must make his claim certain 
and specific. What makes your claim over and something and specific? What can you do to make it something? What?
read this one at the river high court before she went on uh, because she was related to the governor, she became a magistrate. Without time in five. So they felt in their experience in court for the law. And you mean her court is to overrule the Supreme Court. <laughs> so in the criminal matter, you know, somebody that is related to me, there was this transaction that had to do with shipment of goods abroad and all that. And then in the end, this man, who was like a middle man, who the goods had already been sent to Mombasa, and the consignee accepted the goods. Now the middle man, that has a, you know, let me not speak short play because of Nigeria, felt it is an opportunity to make money. He told my client that the people rejected it. He was compelled to pay twenty thousand dollars for clearing. He, he, he said all sorts of things. And then before he meet my client, is my cousin in the size of God, they arrested the younger brother. Charging with four one men before the magistrates. And I don't go to magistrate, but because this is my fault now, so I have to go there. So when I went thinking maybe this lady will remember that I called her. She remember that she came to my office trying for me to help her in the media across. And other causes that I'm just being frank. You know how, you know, that's why some people don't even like to her, but if it's in your nature, go ahead with it. So when I appeared before her, she said that the method is for remanding. Which one is remanding? She said that uh, the prosecution, the lawyer was just jumping up. They have filed the motion this Monday, I cannot be heard. That uh, the motion has the right to read the motion and then uh, remind this person to prison a fresh graduate waiting to do your service. I said, Your worship might know the law. They cited the provision of the item. I said, Your worship, I hope, I think this is being read upside down. <laughs> I said, Your worship, first of all, there's something called bogus charges. Your worship will have a right to answer that you do one or so. When a charge is brought before you, and there's an application seeking, I will teach you that in the generation of the And there's an application seeking to commit somebody to prison, the pending investigation, you know, things are wrong with it. In the first place, you have the right to look at the charge, make what is called preliminary inquiries, and if after making the preliminary inquiries, you discover that this person has done something wrong. You grant it that it is a very good thing because that is a constitutional right. And then, secondly, your worship, there is nothing like holding charge. Where you put somebody in prison and the police is doing investigation. Who puts the police in, in the prison now? So I say, your worship, that is, and it does not, those laws no longer exist. This is one of the provisions I have quarreled about, but when there is a conflict, between two provisions in the law, the latter provision prevailed. I spoke all the grammar and knew. All the law and knew she was just writing. I said, I was in, I want a short day, because my man told me she was going to be funny. I want a short day to show that this is a commercial transaction. So reluctantly she said, okay, she will remind the, uh, the defendant in police custody. I thought what she did know. Police no longer had jurisdiction. They have tried the matter in court. You are not the two dead. You can't take it. Your worship, I can undertake that I will produce him on the next day. She refused. She left the order. He was taken back to the police station. Two days two, two days are done. Two days I brought 21 documents to show the transaction. And the fact that those people are like, second, in the first place, as a maritime law expert, you cannot clear goods belonging to another person if you're not a consignee. And then again, there's no way you can reject goods without being what returning And then, if for instance you damage the goods, nobody has the right to damage the goods except what the customs. Where are these arguments? Nowhere to be found. So after that reading, she made an order reminding the boy to imprison. So I had to make a move. So I made the move 
And then uh, I just had, I just uh, prepared the word, don't worry. Even if you stay there for one week, I'm bringing you out. So you can be sure I'll be there for you. So I had to sue her. Sue her in a uh, one because for being reckless, being a reckless judicial officer, in one of my read my prayers, I had the court to declare her as corrupt. Why did yeah, that, that's me? Why? Because you are seeing a clear fact. You said something that is clear. I will say something else. So when I did that, I joined the Attorney General. I shouldn't even join. As to tell you, look at this. He called me. Do you mean this up? Immediately he gave an order for the one to be released. You know. And funny enough, it, it just took a day. I had to spend the entire day working. The following day, I got an order to release him. I went to prison, released him, served the magistrate. And then on the day the magistrate was supposed to discharge him, the magistrate said, because he's not here, I will issue pressure. I said, I watch it if you tell it, I will arrest you. I said, you know where I am, I don't talk. You know those who don't talk, don't prevent them. I said, I watch it, you can't do that. So when I'm going to end, she will not thank me. And then after we left the court, I called the lady and her. She went, all oh, no, of my traditional she went about my dress. She went to everybody she knows that knows me. Kept kneeling down, crying. I said, my little, where was she? Mama said, he cried in the pocket of what I am wicked. I am wicked. Even though later I forgave her, but I just went to her to feed the fish. It, it, for you it's easy. You sit down and send people to prison for doing nothing. So my suit against them for two billion is defended. And they are also they be calling. They are because they don't have to be fast. So there are some causes of action that you still through originating some of. And then other ones you can issue through petition. Matters like uh, divorce um, proceedings. In divorce proceedings, don't make the mistake of coming under the high court rules. Do you understand? Why did I say that? Can someone tell me? This law, this rules of court, don't apply it when you're doing anything on matrimonial causes. Why did I say that? Anybody would have that? Yes, sir. Why is it called? Uh, the, 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 the <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's correct. So when any cause of action is guided by these rules, it excludes the application of the general high court procedure rules because there are something called matrimonial causes rules. So that's the one that guides. And in that one now, there is no provision for written statement on vote. There is no provision for that. But we have tried it a couple of times. You know, when, for instance, I rather defend than be stood in an action like that. For reason personal to me. You know, so if I have such a situation, I simply apply to the court. So back it out to buy a written statement on or oh, even though it is not in the rules, because the court can always exercise jurisdiction to do what? To make sure that substantial justice is done. And then again, if you have a witness that is offshore by Section 84 of the Indians Act and the departing directions. You can also do what? Apply that your friend be taken virtually. During many the people who will um, lecture us on trials, we talk about that. And then remember that when you have sued, to indicate the capacity, assuming you are representing your village, make sure you indicate. That the claimant is doing for himself and as representative of you mentioned the village, right? Now, if someone has given you a power of attorney to represent him, you are a mere agent. You have to disclose your principal. 
right? You don't sow in your name alone. Let's say, for instance, you are Mr. NBC and Mr. XYZ has authorized you to sue. You simply say, NBC, suing as attorney of XYZ. So, so far, so good. That's the much you can take from this for now until we move over to the next uh, group.